This is a very difficult set of evidence questions. Very, very difficult. I think I actually got at least one of them wrong the first time I ever did this, this pair of questions. Um, we're going to still follow the normal QLC method, which means we have to kind of take this pair in a weird order to make sure we stay organized and do our best to understand the, the very difficult passage. Uh, but I do want to point one thing out right away that makes this very scary as an SAT question, is that every single answer choice in number 17 has some sort of strong word, right? Uh, selfish, right? Depriving women, pragmatic impulse to maximize contentment, a cruel tendency, a well-meaning but ultimately ineffectual talent, uh, intent. These are all very strong words. So normally, if we're looking at choices and we see strong choices, they're probably wrong, right? I mean, sometimes the passage justifies them, but usually not. Here, we're not gonna be able to rely on that sense but also, the passage itself is very strong. The author of this passage, from the start, is just like going at it and saying, you know, men are treating women terribly. And so, when we have these historical passages, sometimes the strong words that we would normally be afraid of are justified because the passage is taking a strong stance. And so, it, it really doesn't change our strategy too much. We still need to find evidence of anything that's in the choices in the lines. We need to make matches, but it just goes to show that like the SAT does weird stuff sometimes and, and our normal expectations get subverted. And so you just gotta be careful here. So the first thing we wanna do is let's just make sure we understand the question. What does the author suggest primarily motivates men's behavior towards women? So if I were to kind of summarize this a little bit, this is a question that's mostly about the men maybe, not so much about the women, even though the whole passage is kind of about women, this, this is more about men. But let's look at the answer choices or the line references now in number 18, so that's Q, L, C. And let's see if we can get anything out of these. So 19 to 21, that's all the way to the beginning of my thing here. So if woman is not permitted to assert a majesty of mind, why fatigue her faculties with the labors of any species of education? Well, this is where my dumb summary of the question kind of helps, right? Because this choice seems to be much more about women, right? I don't, I don't think we're talking about men at all here. We're asking a question. It's not really about what men are doing or what men are motivated to do. It's maybe more about women's motivation. So this line reference seems wrong to me. It's just, it's not on topic. Line reference B, 44 to 46. That is kind of over this little break here, which is kind of annoying. And... I hate when they do this, when they have a, a line reference that's kind of in the middle of a sentence. So it goes from she to view. So here is where it ends. She, like Tantalus, is placed in a situation where the intellectual blessing she sighs for is within her view. Okay, again, this seems to be about women, women's motivations. They want some sort of intellectual blessing. And it's in their view, and presumably men are stopping them from getting it, but that's not in the line. So again, this doesn't it doesn't seem to be on topic. It's a very dumb topic that we've set ourselves up for, but I don't know. I, I think I'd be able to tell if it's about more about men or women. So, you know, it can help. Let's see, 49 to 52. Uh, that is here to here. Okay. Man says, you shall be initiated in all the arts of pleasing, but you shall in vain hope that we will contribute to your happiness one iota beyond the ego, beyond the principle which constitutes our own. Okay, so it's about men. This is a good example where, like, let's not worry about the rest. I know it's about kind of what I need it to be about. I will worry about the rest later. It's clearly saying some more important stuff. My puny little brain does not immediately understand it, but... I don't panic. I just say, okay, let's keep line reference C in the mix. Let's see what D says. Um, 53 to 56. That is here. And where does it start? Woman. So it starts, the sensual egotist piece is technically not part of it. So it starts here. Woman is absolutely necessary to your felicity, nay, even to your existence, yet she must not arrogate to herself the power to interest your actions. Now, I know it starts with woman, whereas the other one starts with man. But this is a good example where like something is very clearly referencing something else. Woman is absolutely necessary to your felicity, right? Whose felicity? Well, we're talking about the previous line reference, man, right? Men's felicity. So 
And you might not know what Felicity means, but men are still being talked about here. So I would still keep line reference D in the mix because, well, it's kind of still about men. So that's something. Okay, that's pretty good. We got now maybe a 50-50 shot of getting question 18 right. That's pretty good. Uh, now let's look at question 17 and see if we can make any sense of these difficult choices. So A, men are primarily motivated by a selfish desire to deprive women of even the smallest joy. So there's a couple of words I would want to kind of think about here, right? So uh, selfish, like we said, is definitely strong, depriving women of things, and even the smallest joy. There's a lot of stuff here I can check. Let's look at these. Man says you shall be initiated in all the arts of pleasing. Maybe that matches with joy a little bit. But you shall in vain hope that we will contribute to your happiness. That's definitely joy. One iota beyond the principle which constitutes our own. So, maybe. Uh, that's where I'd leave that. I'd be like, okay, they both kind of seem to be talking about happiness and joy. That's a little bit of a connection. Let's leave choice A. B, a pragmatic impulse to maximize contentment. Well, contentment is a harder word, but contentment also means happiness and joy. So it's a shorter choice. Pragmatic is a hard word, but if I were just going on the words I know, hopefully we know contentment and we know that it means happiness, and so we got to keep this one in as well. C, a cruel tendency to afford and then withhold affections. Well, it's not talking about like loving women and withholding love, withholding affection, right? So it's about happiness, but happiness and, and affection aren't necessarily the same thing. That's, that's a little bit more of a stretch. Um, it's not they're, not, they're not saying they're cruel either. Cruelty is a very, very strong word. I imagine someone like torturing someone else. I don't, I don't really see that here. They're talking about someone being happy or not. I don't know if that qualifies as like cruelty and torture. Let's look at line reference D again. Woman is absolutely necessary to men's felicity, nay, even to your existence, yet she must not arrogate to herself the power to interest your actions. Nothing there seems about like giving and withholding affection. So I don't fully understand choice C, but I hope that you can sense the same thing that I'm sensing here is that a and B have a much tighter connection to the lines than choice C does. Happiness and joy and contentment are all kind of there. Whereas affection, cruelty, I'm not seeing those ideas. So I would get rid of C here. It's a little strong and I don't see a lot of obvious evidence that that strong word is justified. D, a well-meaning but ultimately ineffectual intent to act fairly. Well, it doesn't seem like men are, are, this is a very positive statement, right? That men are trying to act fairly. I don't get that vibe. I don't get that, like, men are good vibe. I think this is pretty negative, both of these choices. I'm, I'm unclear about where, how negative, or, or why it's negative. It's not cruelty negative, but it's something. This well-meaning, you know, intent to act fairly, these are all positive ideas. Yes, it's ineffectual which means ineffective. But if the intent is good, I would want to see some, I, some words that tell me that, that show me that men are being good here. Um, but it's saying men are it's kind of quoting men here and saying that women shall in vain hope that men will contribute to the women's happiness. So I don't know, that doesn't seem that good. Woman is absolutely necessary to your felicity. Uh, yet she must not arrogate to herself the power to interest your actions. So like woman is good for you, but something, I don't know, it doesn't seem like men are good for women. Again, like I'm not certain it's wrong. It's not like it's like provable, but if I'm just going on the vibes that I'm getting, I'm not picking up a positive vibe here. And so B and A are kind of now the only two that, that match and, and they're definitely matching more with C than with D. Um, maybe felicity, that's a tough word, but it kind of means happiness, so that, that also may, may work. Um, but if I were at this point in the test and I, I have you know three more passages to go, how much more time do you want to spend on a question like this? 
The smart guesses are going to be the things that have the strongest vibes. C has the strongest vibe of like, yeah, that seems to be the thing that both A and B are referring to, so that's probably my best bet. Between A and B, honestly, B is, is weaker. I know it has some strong words like maximizing contentment, but it's a little bit better than selfish, depriving women of even the smallest joy. Mostly because that choice A, what that would mean is that the lines are saying that men want women to have absolutely zero, without exception, zero happiness. That's a really big claim. And I know these are hard words here, but I feel like if that were what they were saying, I would know that. That's such a big thing for them to say. I, I just feel like that would be more obvious. B, on the other hand, okay, maximizing happiness, that, that's a little bit more loose, right? That could mean some things, right? So maximizing men's happiness, it doesn't mean that women can't be happy. It just means that men are trying to make themselves happy first. So it's a weaker statement. It's a safer bet. And again, if I'm, if I'm rushing and I need to just move on to the next question, those safer bets aren't guaranteed bets, but they're more likely to get me the points. And in this case, both are right. So let me see if I can explain now concretely why that is the case. If we go back to line C, man says, you shall be initiated in all the arts of pleasing. What that means is men are telling women, you will know how to make people happy. We will teach you, women, how to make people happy. All the arts of pleasing. But... You shall in vain hope that we will contribute to your happiness, one iota beyond the principle which constitutes our own. Meaning, men are going to let are going to educate women on how to make people happy, but men are not going to help women become happy any more than they need to. It's not like they're saying no, you can't ever be happy, women. Men are still saying yeah, women should be happy, but if I have to choose between a woman's happiness and my own male happiness, I'm going to choose my own male happiness. That is a pragmatic, practical choice, right? It's, it's not it, it is selfish. I would agree with, with that part of choice A. It is selfish. But it, B frames it better. It is a pragmatic impulse because men are doing what is in their best interest because they're in charge. They're educating women to make the men happy, but whenever the decision comes down as to whose happiness wins out, it's always men deciding that their own happiness is better. And so that line is saying that. It's line reference C is definitely saying choice B here. It is, it is not up for debate. The hard thing about this question is being able to interpret that line and, and get that meaning out of there. And so do the best you can. There are going to be questions like this, passages like this, where things are really hard to understand. It took me, you know, we're looking at like 13 minutes here of me explaining this, and I think I needed every minute of it. Um, you cannot take 13 minutes on the real test. So ultimately, what you're going to need to do when you get to these hard questions, which could appear anywhere in the section, it's not in order of difficulty, you need to be able to give up. That doesn't mean you randomly bubble things. It means you do the normal process, you eliminate stuff that seems obviously wrong, and then you place a bet. And you place the best bet that you can. When we have line references, we use things like the chronology rule to place a smart bet on a line that's more likely to be right. We do what we did here and make connections, right? We say, okay, the stomach happiness and pleasing, right? They're talking about those things. And, well, contentment and joy are both forms of happiness. So A and B are a smart bet. If you guessed A here, I don't blame you too much. But if I were thinking again in terms of SAT strategies, stronger choices tend to be wrong, weaker choices tend to be right. A is definitely stronger than B. It's just got more stuff in there. And if you were totally lost and you had to place a bet, B is the better bet. Might be wrong occasionally, but in this case it was right. I hope this helps. It's a really hard question, so don't get mad at yourself too much. But if you were shooting for that perfect reading score, You've got to be able to sort through stuff you don't understand. You can't learn every vocab word, so you've got to find strategies and stuff to make sense of the, the nonsensical.